He is baseball Hall of Famer getting set to play with Trent Dilfer and Mark Rippon. He is Tom Glavin here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Tom? I'm good, Rich. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. How's the golf game? How is it? Um, you know, it's typical moments of uh, brilliance and moments of not such great brilliance. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what shows up this weekend. Okay. So are you aware of what your odds are to win it? Are you aware of these? I numbers? am not. No, it's funny. Somebody mentioned those odds to me yesterday, but I don't know what my odds are. Okay. I'm, I am going to break news to Tom Glavin here. You are 50 to one to win this tournament. You are amongst your pitching brethren at 50 to one. Roger Clemens. Josh Beckett, David Wells, and Greg Maddox, fifty to one. Your thoughts, Tom Glavin? Uh, that seems about right. I mean, uh, a lot of things would have to go right for me to win. I mean, there's some guys out here that can play, some guys that uh, hit the ball a long, long way. So, I mean, that certainly uh, is is uh, advantageous for them. So, I think for me, it's going to be keep it in play, make some putts, and, and see what happens. So, you never know. Can you beat Maddox head up, straight up? What do you think? I can, yes. I can. Whether or not I do, um, I guess we'll find out. It sounds like somebody who has done that, Tom. <laughs> I have done that. I've, I've beat him a few times. He's gotten me a few times. I've gotten smoky, you know, a little bit. But, uh, you know, so so we'll see how. The tournaments are always a different animal. You know, you got to – so much of it is uh, managing your, your emotions and your expectations. So you never you never know how that all is going to play out. Smoltz is 8-1, to one, Tom Glavin, uh, with uh, General Hospital Dreamboat from back in the day, Jack Wagner – at eight to one, um, and then your two playing partners, Trent Dilfer's ten to one, and Mark Rippon's seven to one. So you, you're you're going to be in this mix here, Tom. One would. Well, think I got to tell you, actually, I'm playing with Schmolz and Maddox today. So oh, I you think are. Trent, yeah, Trent and those guys are the group behind me. Ah. Um, but that that's about right. I mean, um, you know, Jack can play. He was, uh, you know, he was in contention last year, and you know, certainly Schmolz has the ability to to make a bunch of birdies and uh you know i know trent dilfer's got a good game so um you know and mark rippon no you know mark's mark's one of those guys that doesn't hit it a ton but he keeps it in play and and scores pretty well so i would say all those guys have okay. uh, somewhat of a chance all right so you're breaking news to me you're playing with smoltz <laughs> and and maddox today why not i mean what's yeah. a brilliant pairing right there with all the the big three uh here on the rich eisen show with tom glavin right now okay so as for the here and now in major league baseball if you picked up a baseball could you tell if it was juiced do you think um, you know, at this particular moment, I don't know, but I think, you know, we went through a similar thing, uh, you know, when we were all playing in the, in the mid to early nineties, uh, where there were some, some talk of the balls being juiced a little bit. And I think there was something to it, you know, there was, you know, there was definitely a difference, uh, in the baseballs that one particular year. And, and it's, it's more, it's more in what you notice in terms of being able to, to to manipulate the baseball, so to speak. You know, every pitcher gets a ball, whether it's uh, a new ball or, or rubbed by the umpires, and we still have to fiddle with it. We still have to rub it. We still have to, you know, put our own touch on it. And there were some times in those in that year uh, where we were going through it that that leather was wound a little bit tighter. Uh, it was a little bit harder to. You know, you take your fingernail and stick it into the leather of the baseball. It's going to put a little bit, little bit of an indentation in it. And then there was a year where it was really hard to do that. So, if my my guess is, if if pitchers are talking about it and they think there's something different about the baseball, then my guess is there probably is something to it. So, what what, what was it about the baseball other than that you couldn't just stick a fingernail into it and make some form of an indentation back in that? Uh, the that year, Tom. Well, when they're when they're that way, they just feel really like they're wound really tightly. It's almost like you have a you know you've got a golf ball in your hand, you know. And and when that when it happens, uh, you know the seams are are not quite as prevalent on the ball as you're used to. So, you know that affects obviously breaking balls. It affects movement on on all your other pitches. So, you know there was. Uh, like I say, definitely a year where sometimes you'd get a baseball that the umpire would throw to you and be like, you know, there's there's no way I'm using this. And you throw it back and try and find another one. Was that the famed chicks dig the long ball year, Tom? Yeah, it was in that, yeah, it was in that era. So maybe that had something to do with it. So maybe I'm partly to blame. Who who knocked on your door to say, would you like to be in a commercial with Heather Locklear? Who did that back in the day? Tom you know, it was, uh, my, it was funny. My agent actually asked me earlier in that year if I wanted to do something with Nike. And I said, sure, why not? I had no idea what it was. And then, uh, you know, they they tell you the concept and what they're trying to do. And, you know, even when you're going through it, it's kind of it's kind of goofy because it's pieced together. And we did it over a couple of days on a road trip. Half of it was in Florida. Half of it was in Philadelphia. And even as you're doing it, you're like, what are we doing? What are they doing with this? And, <laughs> you know, when it all came together, it was pretty funny. And, 
I credit myself with, um, you know, resurrecting Heather Locklear's career. I think that's really back on the map. <laughs> you and Melrose Place, Tom, was an unbeatable <laughs> exactly. combination for her. <laughs> I think when it all came, when, when just in retrospect, in retrospect, Absolutely. Uh, Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer, joining me here before he tees off with uh, the other big three, Greg Maddox and John Smoltz in the first round of the American Century Championship um, here on the Rich Eisen Show. So how would a pitching clock have affected you, Tom? Um, probably not much. I mean, you know, we were all of the mindset that get the ball and go, you know, and, and you know, obviously it's it's a little bit different when you – have runners on base, uh, you know, that that's the proverbial, you got to slow the game down a little bit, which, you know, I think a lot of younger players, younger pitchers have trouble with uh, the game. You know, when guys start getting on base, you start getting in trouble, the game goes fast and your brain's going a million miles an hour. And, and it's that ability to slow things down when you're getting into some trouble that I think helps an awful lot. And, and the ability to do that is uh, certainly a, a big asset for guys that can do it. But, you know, with nobody on base, um, it wouldn't have been an issue because I think we were all of the mindset, give me the ball and let's make my pitch. And, and you know, after the pitch is over, uh, get the ball back and try to make your next one. You know, you want to keep your your guys behind you as engaged in the game as you can and keep them as ready as you can. And if you're taking, you know, a minute in between pitches, uh, that's the best way to get your infielders and outfielders on their heels and, and uh, you know, kind of lose their attention a little bit. Of your 22 years in Major League Baseball, 22 seasons, 17, you had 30 or more starts. You led the league and games started six times. Are players and pitchers being babied today, Tom? We just don't see these numbers anymore. No, yeah, I think they are. Um, it's, it's no fault of their own. Um, you know, I mean, Look, I, I, I think I went through or we went through a similar similar argument uh, in my generation with the five-man rotation and, and guys, you know, not pitching 300 innings a year. Um, I think it's all, it's all in how you're brought up. And these guys today are being brought up that, you know, five or six innings max is all you need out of a starting pitcher. Um, and, and, you know, when you have some of these bullpens that are – uh, constructed the way that they are, where you've got guy after guy coming out of the bullpen that's throwing 95 to 100 miles an hour, it, it's hard for a a manager to leave a starting pitcher in there to flip a lineup for the third or fourth time when he can go to those toys that he has out there in the bullpen. So, um, you know, a lot of it is is just simply how the game is played now. Um, but I do I do think that by and large guys are being babied a little bit too much in today's game a couple more minutes left with tom glavin baseball hall of famer when was the last time you smoltz and maddox hung out together how often does this happen um you know it's been it's been better lately you know with with the hall of fame inductions and certainly this event here in tahoe and uh another one that we do in january with uh, diamond resorts uh you know we get together two or three times a year at least now, which is great. I mean, there was a stretch there where, you know, when we were all retired and, and kind of doing our thing, um, I didn't see these guys for a while. So uh, I think two years ago when we played in this event together, that was the first time that the three of us had played around the golf since we got done playing. So um, it's it's nice now, like I say, with these with these events uh, a couple of times a year that kind of bring us all together. So it's fun. What's the best safe for work Greg Maddox prank you can tell me, Tom? Oh my God. You know, everybody always asks about Greg and I, and I think he has a reputation for being a little bit, um, I guess disgusting would be a good word. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of things you can't, you just can't tell about Greg, but you know, he's, he's not one to shy away from doing something disgusting or trying to do something to embarrass somebody. So when you're around him, you got to be on your toes. So you don't have one sp specific one that you can, I don't, really? I don't know. It's just no. I don't. What's the angriest you've ever seen Bobby Cox, Tom? Oh, <laughs> uh, that would probably be, there'd be a couple of those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I saw him one time uh, come in after a game uh, that we lost due to a, a miscommunication on a pop-up and, and flip the uh, the spread the table over that had all the <sighs> post-game food on it. So, you know, needless to say, everybody was starting to go to dinner after the game. Um, I, I, uh, I watched him change Andrew Jones's career when he pulled him off the field uh, in the middle of a game and then proceeded to air him out in the dugout uh, down in the tunnel. So I've seen Bobby on a few occasions where he's uh, he's led into some guys, but uh, it's usually warranted and message is usually delivered and it doesn't happen again. Ah, for, for those who might not know, how did he change Andrew Jones's career? <clears throat> couple minutes I have well, left there. you know Andrew was such a good outfielder obviously that uh it was more of a surprise when he didn't catch a ball uh so there was a play where a ball that was 
you know, kind of softly hit, and Andrew didn't get a great jump on it, and it looked like he kind of didn't go after it, and, and Bobby was less than thrilled with his um, effort on the play, so to speak. And in the middle of the inning, he pulled him off the field, um, brought him down into the into the tunnel of the dugout and proceeded to pretty much air him out and, you know, tell him, I don't know who you think you are, but we're not going to do that anymore. And, and I think part of it was to send a message to Andrew, but I think part of it was, you know, just to get Andrew to understand how good he was and what he was capable of doing and to make sure he did it every night. And, and from that point on, uh, you know, Andrew was what he was and arguably one of the greatest center fielders I've ever played the game. Okay, <laughs> last one out of you, Maddox, and Smoltz. Which one of you would have the best chance of beating the freeze? Tom in Atlanta. Ooh man, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Smoltzy. He, uh, you know, he's got he's big. He's got those long legs, so long strides. Um, okay. If I was on skates, I could beat him, but I don't think I can beat him in a sprint. Okay. By the way, I lied. Last question: Are you part of? Are you part of? Uh, are you still in the mix to maybe buy uh, the Marlins, one of the groups, Tom? I am. We're we're still in the mix. Uh, we're in a good position. Uh, so now it's just kind of we're. We're waiting to see what happens. Hopefully something's going to come to a conclusion here uh, relatively soon. But, yeah, we're still in it, and uh, I feel good about our, our group and our position, so we'll see what happens. And you'd be want to be part of the front office should that happen? Yes, absolutely. I think it would be, uh, be something that um, you know, would be fun to be a part of and uh, you know, uh, have the opportunity to be a part of a, you know, an organization and shaping an organization and, and you know, how, how they're going about their business is something that uh, I'm certainly interested in doing, so I hope it happens. Tom, th- appreciate you calling in before heading to the first tee. Good luck. Go ahead and take him down. It. Take him down. Good talking to you. You got it. It's Tom Glavin. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, please download our app. There's lots of fun things there other than just more of the videos you just saw. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. Just download it. Trust me. You'll enjoy it.